Are you gardening? Well, what's up, Caddy Wampus crew? Welcome back to Caddy Wampus Acres. It's Jason and Lauren, and we are gardening with goats today. And so she, um, she's the lone uh, ranger of all the uh, baby goats. Well, all the Nigerian dwarfs that we had left over. So she's gonna help us uh, get some squash going in today. We have a few of our uh, plant starts, our squash starts over here that we're gonna get in the ground uh, in this row. We've had some weeds grow up. And so we're gonna get these out of the way real quick and then we're gonna direct sow some seeds. Mm -hmm. And so um, I will say this row is probably, it's gonna be a grab bag of whatever we've grown and we'll probably have to wait until they start producing squash to see what they are. Cause we have uh, about, I imagine we're gonna have about six or seven different kinds in here, so we'll find out. She's she's super excited to go, as you can, as you can tell. So let's uh, go ahead and get this weeded, and um, yeah, then we'll uh, go ahead and get some seeds planted. Like a bird on a tree. Well, keeping up with the goats can be uh, sort of annoying sometimes, so we put her over there. She's not happy about it. Lauren's gonna get the starts going, and I'm gonna go get some seeds so we can direct seed the rest of this. All right, so we don't know what that is, but it's growing and it looks healthy, so we're gonna leave it. Um, uh, we've had some issues with our squash this year. Like, it feels like they're not, I don't know, they're getting too hot or something like that, so. So we're gonna do a few yellow squash, we're gonna do some acorn, and we're gonna do some primavera spaghetti squash. So we're gonna have a variety of squash out here. They're all squash, it'll be okay. If you watched our videos last summer, um, we hand pollinated the squash, so if you've not seen that, check that out. Um, it's definitely a good option uh, if you don't have a lot of pollinators, but being that the bees are right behind us, I'm hoping that they see these gigantic yellow flowers and help us out with pollination. But it doesn't, um, definitely wouldn't hurt to hand pollinate these still. We've never eaten the blossoms. No. The, the, the squash blossoms, people fry those up, stuff them with, yeah. we stuffed them with some goat cheese. Goat cheese, uh, some people dip Let's them and ba actually batter them and fry them like that. So Support comment them. down below if you've ever eaten the squash blossoms. I think we had, um, I think our friends over at Four Kids in a Farm, I think they said they had tried them before. We're going to try and be better about trying some new things with our veggies. I love tomatoes. Lauren does not like tomatoes nearly as much, but- it's salsa, I like salsa. Yeah, salsa is good. <laughs> but we're trying to get better about the uh, fruits and veggies that we eat. Um, I, I'm really excited about the persimmon. Uh, I don't know that we fell in love with persimmon when we first ate it, but we're gonna have this massive persimmon tree, so I'm looking forward to that. So To just... be honest, I didn't know what a persimmon was until you were like, we're getting a persimmon tree, and I said, what's a persimmon? <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna keep planting this row out. Uh, we're gonna do some acorn and some primavera squash. Some, uh, primavera? Spaghetti, spaghetti. We have a whole nother row that we'll do with um, zucchini. We have a bunch of zucchini started in the greenhouse, so we'll see how, how well those do, and we'll plant all the starts that come up. Uh, they seem to be very sensitive to heat, so um, sometimes if we don't open the, the greenhouse door and let air flow really, really good through there, then we have issues with it. So that's what we're gonna do with that row. Um, but for now, we got our first row started, and we'll see how it goes. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here all right we got to get these watered in so they can start their germination process sit together it's so beautiful. Okay, so now we're in here in our cherry tomatoes. As you can see, uh, I've been sweating a lot because it is muggy as crap out here. Um, but we are going to try something new this year with our tomatoes. Historically, we grew our tomatoes in our enclosed garden. Uh, we would string them up and prune them along the way. And so, being that they're out here in an outdoor garden, we don't have cables up above us, we are going to try something new. 
We are going to call this the Cattywampus Climb. So if anybody tries to steal that name, we have this on video, but we're hoping this will work and I'll tell you what we did on these two rows and then we're gonna show you what we did over here. It's a combination of a couple things where we normally run one vine, we prune to one vine and we run it up a string and a little bit of combination with the Florida weave. So here's what we did. We took these long, I think they were, most of them were 10 foot, some were eight foot, uh, galvanized steel pipes. We drove them into the ground with the post driver and we used this tomato twine. And this stuff is really nice. Get it super cheap on Amazon. I'll try and remember, put a link down below in the uh, description. And we just, every about six, eight, 10 inches, somewhere around there, we're gonna run these strings between these. We have uh, basically one on each end and then one between six plants. I'm hoping it won't be too heavy. If we put, if we space them out enough, I think it'll work good. And then what we've done is we pruned our tomatoes because they were getting out of control uh, because we hadn't been messing with them for a while. I guess we'd just been too busy with everything. And at each string, we're gonna use either a tomato clip or this uh, Velcro stuff, uh, which is for specifically for tomatoes and we're going to tie them up and basically we're going to create a trellising effect as as we go but we're still going to do our typical pruning to one vine because it works really good for us i i know certain people don't like it as much but this has worked for us for several years and we grow tomatoes into june and july and usually once they're gosh eight nine feet tall we have to top them off because we just can't handle them anymore so we've this is what they're gonna look like when they're done. You can see we have these overgrown ones right here. We're gonna go ahead and show you how we do this method. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up about, probably about a foot, and I'm gonna use this tomato twine. This stuff we use, it, we started out with 6,300 feet, so we have plenty. And this stuff's really good, uh, it doesn't stretch, and uh, I like it a lot. So I'm gonna tie this off at our first post. All right, and normally um, I would attach this to my belt through this little belt loop, but being that we're doing it this way, um, I'm just gonna use it by hand. Okay, we've wrapped it around this one. Gotta keep it nice and tight and we'll move on to the next. And finally what we're doing here is we're gonna tie off to our last post and I'm keeping this string super, super tight, as tight as I can without hurting my hands too much. All right, so we got it tied off. Lauren's already started pruning and I'm going to show you how we finish this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a video up in the top that shows you how we do our tomato pruning. It's the, what we did last year and that sort of gives you an idea of how we do this. But we're going to start from the bottom with these since they already have several suckers already on them and we're going to work our way up. Our rule of thumb always is we basically take off all the leaves, these guys here, below the bottom bloom and we never sucker above the top bloom so that's what we do that's what i'm going to do on this one and you got to be careful sometimes because you, you don't want to take off your main vine you and me we meant to be in the great outdoors we also make sure that we don't have any leaves actually uh, touching the ground because that's not healthy all right, that one's pruned, so all we need to do is tie this one up. So we're just using this uh, Velcro tomato stuff, and um, we are going to, I'm gonna just sort of go around here and loosely tie this in a semi-upward fashion. After you get two or three of these on here, uh, we'll end up starting to um, work them up a straight path and they want to grow up towards the Sun anyways and so they'll start working their way that way all right we're gonna finish this row and we'll then we'll show you the final product Step back. 
Okay, so we have our first three rows ever of the Cattywampus Climb. We're gonna give it a go. Let us know in the comments what you think. And as you can see, uh, we figured out as we were doing this row of sun sugars, we already had to do a second row that's about, I don't know, six, seven, eight inches, something like that, because several of these had grown so vigorously that they needed a second row. So you get to see in advance the way that we're gonna work it. And we'll probably weave the vines in and out this way, but uh, essentially this is the way it's gonna work. So it seems pretty simple for us to operate it and um, we welcome you to try it on your homestead or your uh, garden as well. And like I said, let us know what you think about it. The last thing we need to do out here in the garden today is top our peppers. We also have a video for pruning peppers, put that link up above, but we gotta get in here and prune these peppers before they get too out of control so we can get them to start bushing out. Let's get over there. So to encourage outward growth, we always encourage people to uh, prune their peppers or top your peppers. And I usually say after about five or six leaves, you're good to do it. Uh, these have much more than that. Like I said, we've been slacking. And so by encouraging outward growth, you get a stronger plant with many more peppers. And so we have our gypsy peppers and uh, mini bells and our cinder jalapenos. We have a bunch of peppers out here. So we're just gonna go through and this one's actually has peppers forming on it already, but we're gonna go through and uh, nip off this top um, set of leaves here. Basically all the energy that goes into growing up is now gonna grow out. We're gonna get outward growth like crazy. Sometimes you need to go and Take a step back the truth around you from a distance you can tell greens mix and it is doing phenomenal um, this is probably gonna once it gets warm this is all gonna peter out uh, and then we have a variety called Jericho uh, lettuce it's a romaine Jericho lettuce and that is heat tolerant and so we're gonna get that rolling into the summer and we go about through June with that so we are picking for lunch and dinner this week just another example of when you homestead you're home fed well, we learned a couple things today. We learned that uh, gardening with goats is not very easy, um, even when they're tiny and cute like this. Hulk, uh, Hulk just took a poop in my loofah bed. Yeah, so. So he's apologizing. The barn cats, you can expect that from them. The garden is growing. It's about three quarters full, maybe two thirds. We still got a little bit more to plant and grow, but it's doing awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Please remember, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button, like the video, ring the bell so you can keep up to date with everything we're doing here on the farm. And uh, this little girl wanted you to know that you should share the video, shouldn't they? Oh my gosh, yes, yes. You should share the videos on all your social media platforms so people oh. who are not already gardening, so they know to get in the garden. Hulk was just telling me, and she agrees, that you guys should check out our website, www.cattywampusacres.com. You can find all of our t-shirts um, and our soaps, our goat milk soaps that we make from our goats that we milk right here on our homestead and where you can find all things hi, to keep up with us. So remember, we always say here, when you homestead, you're home fed. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.